Welcome to the You Got Into Wear podcast. I'm your host, Joy Wade, author, college admissions coach, and founder of You Got Into Wear. Every Monday, I bring you actionable interviews with college admissions experts and students who share their insight on college applications, essays, scholarships, financial aid, test prep, and more to help you get admitted into your top choice universities. Let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the You Got Into Wear podcast. I am so excited that you are listening to today's episode. If you're a high school student who wants to learn the ins and outs of the college admissions process and eliminate the stress of learning everything on your own, you have to consider getting your free college admissions glossary guide from You Got Into Wear. The College Admissions Glossary is a downloadable PDF that provides over 50 college admissions and financial aid related terms and definitions for students. The college application process is overwhelming and the glossary will eliminate hours of research and confusion while filling out applications for admission, scholarships, and financial aid. You can download the free guide at glossary.yougotintoware.com. That's glossary.yougotintoware.com. Let's get straight into today's episode. I'm so delighted to welcome my good friend Janelle Layton to today's podcast episode. If you want to view the video version of this episode, you can find the link in the show notes at yougotintoware.com slash podcast slash eight. So today's episode, we are going to be discussing the main differences between our lives at an HBCU versus a PWI. If you're someone that's considering going to a historically black college or university, this will be a great episode for you to learn about Janelle's life at Hampton University versus my life at the University of Southern California, which is a predominantly white institution. Hey guys, it is Joy here and I'm here with my friend Janelle. Hey y'all. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about HBCU versus PWI, not really versus, but we're just gonna talk about our experiences. I go to USC, the University of Southern California, which is in Los Angeles, and I go to Hampton University, the real HU in Hampton, Virginia. (laughs) Yes, so this is a disclaimer before y'all go crazy in these comments. Point number one, any hate comments will be deleted from this video because this video is solely for educational purposes for students in high school who are trying to choose between some schools. As you know, I do like college admissions videos on this channel, so that is why we're doing this video. And number two, these statements do not apply to every experience and they also do not apply to every university, whether it's HBCU or PWI. So don't apply this to every school. You should talk to people at each individual school that you are interested in. So these are just about USC and Hampton and us two chicas. All right, let's go. (laughs) I also wanted to say something else. Oh, okay. So let's get some background information. So I thought this was a good experiment because we both went to the same high school in Pennsylvania all white people (laughs) and yeah so let's talk about why we chose our school so what are some schools you applied to and then why did you choose Hampton okay so I applied to I don't remember okay (laughs) (laughs) okay I applied to University of Pittsburgh so I'm from Pennsylvania so I applied to a lot of in-state schools so Temple University University of Pittsburgh and that's all the Pennsylvania schools actually and then I applied to Georgia Tech, and I applied to Hampton. And I think that's it. And why did you choose HU? So my mom had a lot of like familiarity with the school because she used to come down a lot. And then I wanted like pretty much I just wanted change. Like I wanted distance from my school from like Pennsylvania, and I also wanted like different differences from like all the white people so I got a nice change in atmosphere (laughs) gotcha (laughs) so yeah so I applied to USC which was my top choice Um, I applied to NYU University of Miami I applied to Howard which was the only HBCU that I applied to and I applied to um, Temple and then 
some other schools as well but those were the main ones and I chose USC because one they gave me a full tuition scholarship and two it was my top choice school because of their like journalism communication school which is called Annenberg which is pretty dope but a dope dope so those are that's why I chose to go to USC also I wanted to get kind of far from home LA is about as far as you can get <laughs> <laughs> okay so now that you know our background, why we chose, where we go, let's get into some pros and cons. So we're each gonna say three pros and three cons about our experience at HBCU and PWI, which is predominantly white institution if you didn't know that by now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and HBCU is historically black in college university or university. Yeah. Okay, you wanna start with your first pro? Okay. So, the pro of going to HBC, well, the first pro of going to HBCU is being surrounded by black people that are also successful or wanting to be successful. So like, like we said before, I went to like a mainly white high school, middle school, elementary school, <laughs> <laughs> preschool. <laughs> so it was nice to get a change in seeing like black people doing a lot of good things and positive things so that is like the main pro being in that situation gotcha my first pro is i don't know if this is shallow but like <laughs> my first pro is coin aka money <laughs> i have finessed so much money <laughs> out of my school i got into to pay for me to go to conferences i have a full tuition scholarship which is like two hundred thousand dollars well, way more than that actually, because tuition is like 50, I don't know, it's it's high, it's high y'all. <laughs> um, I've just gotten f random funding, there's so many different like scholarships that aren't really hard to get because there's a lot of donors, and USC specifically has a lot of donors, not all um, PWIs um, have as many donors, but they're just like, oh, give this money to a student who's like this, and you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but also there's people who don't know how to finesse the money so it's also the individual like are you hustling to get your scholarship money makes sense okay my second pro sorry basically there's a lot of connections so no matter like what HBC you really go to there's a lot of people that like went that go places that have gone to HBCUs. And so when you're applying to jobs and like trying to do stuff in the real world, when like that person that's high up that went to an HBCU sees you went to an HBCU, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you can have this internship or <laughs> yeah, you can have this job. Cause that's how like powerful the bond is. Sounds dope. So my second pro Oh, my second pro is pulling the race card <laughs> and <laughs> let me explain what I mean by that. So say that there is a opportunity where they're only taking like 10 people and they already chose like seven white people, then they gonna do a black, a Latino, and a, like an Asian <laughs> for the last. And so since there's less black people, you have a better chance, especially if you know the people who are like presenting the opportunity and it's like, you that go-to black person, <laughs> which is, it just works in your favor if you like work the system. So the system is against you if you think like that, but you like, well, they need a black person. Let me go to, <laughs> let me go to YouTube HQ. Let me go to Facebook real quick. Like, let me get this scholarship, this trip. So that is the second pro. All right, the next one is that a lot of people, when they need minorities in their programs or whatever you're trying to do, they look straight to HBCUs. So, like, if you need to, get, like, you want to go into, like, a really good graduate school program and they need, like, minorities to build up that grad school, they'll just look at the top HBC, HBCUs they'll see. And Hampton happens to be one of them, so that works out. And then, same for anything, like, not just grad school, but jobs and internships, so it works out in your favor. Cool. My last pro that I've experienced at USC, and this might be really specific to USC because it's 
in Los Angeles and it's a private university, but accessibility. So all the professors are like really dope. I got to go to like an Oscars photo shoot because my professor was just like, who trying to go? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so they have a lot of like industry connections, which is true with HBCUs as well. But I just thought that was like definitely in my top three, like one of the best things I've experienced at USC. So if you guys follow me on social media and stuff like that, you see me like at all these places and that's just because it's like a school connection. Let's get into the cons. Okay, <laughs> go ahead with your first con. <laughs> All right, so Hans is like, sometimes, <laughs> okay. So I don't know if this is true about every HBCU, but it's very true for Hampton where they'll just send you on like the runaround. So say you needed to like do one thing, like say you need to apply for a new student ID. So you go to the place to get the student ID, but then they'll send you somewhere else because you got to get this form from them before you can go to them. So you go to get the form, but then the people that tell you to get the form tell you to go somewhere else to get some other form <laughs> for no reason. So by like it takes like two days to get something done that could have been done in like five minutes. Oh no. So, <laughs> you know, black people just... <laughs> Okay, so my first con is that minorities are, um, my first con is that, <laughs> my first con is that minorities are advertised but not celebrated slash embraced. So, for example, I work at the Center for Black Cultural and Student Affairs and there's other centers for Latino students, for Asian students, and, like, we are kind of, like, the last consider when it comes to funding, when it comes to events and things like that, so... They like to like put us in pamphlets, but it's like, we need money. We want to have a place, a safe place for us. And it's like, you kind of have to explain why the space needs to exist when it should just be like a given. So another big con is that you get really comfortable around black people. So when you graduate or you're going to an internship in the summer, you forget that the rest of the world isn't like your HBCU. So like, the rest of the world is predominantly white, like let's be honest. And at Hampton or any other HBCU, you're gonna be like surrounded by black people and you're used to that. So it's kind of like uncomfortable once you leave. Gotcha. So my second con is something that a lot of you guys might be interested in when you get to college. So USC specifically doesn't have a huge um, pan, <laughs> does not, USC does not have a huge NPHC um, Greek life so most of the frats and sororities like the Divine Nine like some of them don't exist I think we have like one that's not active and then the rest have like between one and like 10 members so if you're looking for that huge like greek life then usc might not be the place for you but you can also come and like get everyone active again start that <laughs> movement if that's what you're trying to do but if you want to come and just like be straight in it usc not, might not be the best match okay and then my last kind is that my school is very traditional so a lot of things that should be online or should have been like emailed to you it's like printed out and they have like these events they try to make you go to for like traditional reasons and it's kind of extra <laughs> <laughs> so i mean they care it's just they can still update a little bit you know gotcha <laughs> <laughs> um so my last con is about social life slash functions. So basically, if you're at an HBCU, you just show up and it's black people, black music, black life. So at USC, it's like, are the black people having a function? And like, if there is, it's usually one, maybe two. <laughs> if they are having a function, it's like one, maybe two. So you have to kind of just go with whatever is happening or you gotta cross over to the gotta cross the barrier <laughs> but um it's not like i'm saying i don't like going to other types of parties but when you're just not around black people you want to spend your weekend just socializing and things like that so those are our pros and cons of hbc rh uh, 
<laughs> those are the pros and cons of her HBCU experience and my PWI experience. At the end, at the end of the day, if you black and you in college, you are doing something. Don't be bummed out if there's a certain school you wanted to go to that you didn't get to go to. You can always transfer or you can always find out that you like your school regardless. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thought it was informative. If you are in college, maybe comment three or a few pros and cons that you have with your experience or any regrets or advice to future college students. And if you are not in college, then comment some schools that you're considering and if this video helped you decide. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you found value in this podcast, make sure you share it with a friend and leave a review because reviews will help this podcast be discovered by other students and families that are looking to get into college. If you're interested in finding the show notes with links and free resources, go to yougotintowear.com slash podcast.